For this stair and railing project, I'll create this style of stair and the railings. We'll begin the process by creating a custom stair post, then a custom glass panel railing. I'll apply those items to the default stair so we can begin creating this specific set of U-shaped stairs. The stairs will then be widened and repositioned to fill the space and the automatic railings adjusted. To get the railings closer to the final design, I'll use the separate wall railing tool. Let's begin the process by first placing a set of stairs. As I place a set of stairs out in the middle of the room, before I actually configure the stairs, which will go in the left-hand section of the design, I like to set the defaults. If I know the width of the stairs or the railing style, I'll change those up front before going through the exercise of placing the stairs. It's just a time-saving maneuver that I happen to use. Now in the space, I've got actually a five foot opening on each side. So the total is 10 feet back here. So I'm gonna size the stairs and set the railing. Let's go ahead and broaden the 3D view and take a look at some of the settings for this particular stair. Let's double click and open them up. On the general panel, I'm gonna begin with the width. I'm gonna set my stairs to be at 60 inches in width. On the style panel, you can see I already have a tread thickness set at three inches in my particular default, and they're also open underneath. On the stringer panel, I have it set to no stringers, and then I'm using trim against the wall. You can see my dimensions at four inches. On the railing, you can see that there's a railing on both sides, left and right, and then also I'm using balusters. I'm gonna go in and make the change to the stair railing in 3D. I find it a little easier. And then the railing's going to shift depending on which stair segment I'm working on. So I'm gonna leave these items as is. On the newels and balusters panel, you can see that currently I'm using a square style post. I am gonna build a custom post. So I may come back in here and change this browse into the library. And then I have the bottom offset if you zoom in and look at this preview in here, I have a bottom offset at six and three quarters that is raising the post up, which is about the thickness of that stair. So it's resting on the top of the tread. And then finally on the rails panel, you can see that my top rail is set at the width two by one and a half. Those are all of the main settings for my stairs. You can see them grow. Now the next thing I wanna do is open up the library and then I'm gonna do a search for just a glass panel biplane. And you can see where this is located in the library. It's down in the glass panel. To change the rail style from the balusters, let's rotate the view. And when you see the replacement icon, which the cursor changes to the replacement icon, it will then replace that in the stair baluster and that's an easy way to change the style of the railing. Now, one of the things I wanna do is raise the bottom up so that it's not resting on the stairs. Let's go back into the stairs by double clicking on them. And I'm gonna check raise lower the bottom. And what that does is that will allow you to adjust the positioning of that panel. In this case, I have it set to be three inches. The other thing I wanna do with the railing is I'm gonna change the offset to slide that in on the stairs two inches. And then one more small change in the newels and balusters. I'm gonna come in and change the spacing to be every 48 inches. I wanna actually change this railing. You see the style of the railing that I have up here on the screen. Notice that the glass is solid and that there is a metal bracket at the top and bottom that will secure it to the post. And when I go into the library here, the closest thing I have is a solid glass panel, which is really difficult to see in this view. If I switch that out, you can see that it is using a solid glass panel. And now all I need to do is add the hardware to this. I don't wanna do it manually for every single glass pane. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this glass panel just out in the middle of the room. And then we're gonna go into the library, take an elevation view and find the hardware from one of our shower bonus libraries, position it, and then we'll export that as our own symbol. Let's go ahead and do a search for the single plate bracket. 
And you can find this in the library here. Let's go ahead and show this in the folder. Let me go ahead and turn on my settings so we can see where this is located in the folder. And as I scroll up, you can see that I've downloaded the bathroom fixtures number four, shower hardware. That's under glass components and it's a single plate bracket. As I go back over to the floor plan view, let's go ahead and zoom in here just a little bit. And I'm going to place one of these brackets and let's kind of go in here and place it in this position. I want to rotate it and resize it. So the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and open up this glass. I'm going to set the sizing of it to be 3 8 And then for the hardware, we'll rotate it around. And then I'm going to position this. I'm just going to hold my control key down and be approximate to where it's located. And then we'll take the elevation view. Let's use the back clip elevation, shoot a back clip through here. And then I'm just going to position that hardware. Let's go ahead and select it, pull it down just a little bit. I'm going to use the copy tool, slide it up. And I'm not going to be too exact. We'll select both of these items. And I'm going to use the copy tool and then reflect about. And we'll pick up the glass panel. And that's pretty much it for the glass panel. The easiest way to convert this into a symbol, I could shift click on each one of these items to get all five, including the glass. Probably a little easier in this view. Let's go ahead and close that elevation camera. I'm just going to click and drag a marquee around to select all items. And then you'll see in the lower edit menu, convert selected item to symbol. And then we'll just go ahead and I'm going to call it my glass railing two. And then the important thing here is I want to make sure that I select millwork. That way when I browse in to the millwork library, it always shows up. You can see that it shows up again a little bit difficult to see here. So let me change my view to vector view. That way you can see the clear glass. And then in the 3D camera view to switch that out, make sure you select it, get the replacement symbol then you can swap that out. And I've now created a custom glass panel that can be applied to the stairs. Now for the stair railing itself for the post, I wanted to create a custom rail and I've actually kind of already done that to speed the process up. Let me just slide my view over. You can see that in this case, I have a post with a platform or a bezel plate at the bottom. And all I've done here is use the 3D solid tool, created two solids, so solid number one, solid number two. You can then shift select and use the same convert symbol and put that in your library, which I have already done that. So to kind of speed the process along, that's how you can create a custom post. Now in the first iteration for the stair, I'm not going to use that particular post. I'm gonna wait till the end when we use our custom railing style. Now that all the changes are made to the stair, I'm gonna click on it, set as default, and my stair defaults have now been updated. When I click and place a new stair, as we click over here and place a new stair, you can see that the stair is now has all the defaults and we're ready to start actually placing the stairs over in the stair area. Now let's move back over into our floor plan view and let me tile my views so you can see exactly what we're going to do. In the area to create the stairs, I've added a little bit of annotation. Stair segment number one, the first landing, a second stair segment, followed by a second landing, followed by the third segment to form the U-shaped stairs. The program does come with straight, curved, L, and U-shaped stairs. In this example, I need a set of U-shaped stairs that are non-conforming to the default stair tools. So I'll show you how to create them using the stair tool. First set of stairs, I want to have two treads. So I'm going to draw a set of two treads. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I turn the layer on to see the stair details. You can either do that through the active layer display options off to the side of your screen or by clicking on the object layer properties. And I'm going to turn on this layer called stair and ramp details. This will allow you to see the tread overhang as well as newels, balusters, and other components in your stair. Now, as I zoom in, click on the stairs, I'm going to use a tool called point to point move, pick up the snap. I'm going to pull that up into the intersection right on the drywall. That's stair segment number one. 
as I zoom out, stair segment number two, and click and drag to create stair segment number two. And then we'll do the same thing with stair segment number three. And while the stair is still active, I'm going to click in between to form landing number one, click in between segment number two and number three to create the next landing. This is another way you can create L or U-shaped stairs by clicking in between when the stairs are near in proximity. Well, the automatic stairs work pretty well. Now we have to work on a few details. Let's do most of that work over in the 3D view. I'm going to work on the railings initially. The first railing at the top of the stair segment at the wall, I don't want to have that. It will be different than the second stair segment. So I want to make this stair segment specific. To select the stair segment specifically, I'm going to hold my shift key down and then click to select the stair. This will select it on a per stair segment basis using open object in the lower left. And there's two options for the railing. It's either on or off on left or right or against the walls. On the left, I want to turn it off. I'm going to do the same exact process for the lower stair segment. Hold my shift key down, select it, use the open button, and on the stair against wall on the railing, I'm going to remove it on the right side. So now my railings are the way I want them configured. The next thing is, if you zoom in just a little bit, you notice that the automatic railing is not placing a post at the transition on the upper segment of the stair. A couple ways you can solve this. One is you can place a post from your library, or you can go in and force the railing post at the stair landing. So let me tile my views here, Shift F6 on my keyboard. In the floor plan view, as I select the railing, in fact, let's zoom right into this intersection. Typically, U-shaped stairs are always going to have a break, which is designated by this little diamond, so it knows where the stairs connect to the particular landing. I'm going to add a break right in this area right here, and I'm going to force the railing on. Using the break tool that you'll find in the lower edit menu, I'm going to add a break right in this area right here. And you can see the way the railing generated. You can pull this back, and I'm just going to pull it back a little ways here. And now I've generated the railing. Now this may be a shape that's not of interest to you and it might be a little odd. So the easiest way to do that in this case, just place the post from your library and don't worry about adding a break to the landing to add a railing post. I'm gonna fix this when I come back and use the railing wall tool because I wanna be very specific with the style of railing. So I'll just ignore that for now. The next thing I wanna do is come in and take a look at pulling the set of stairs. You see this little stub wall that's pulled out right in this area? I want to pull the set of stairs over the top of that, leave it encased in the stairwell when it passes the perpendicular wall. So what I'm going to do is select the stair segment. And there is a break command, as you typically find for objects like this in the lower edit menu. With the break command, also want to do what's called a complete break because I actually want two stair segments since I don't want the upper portion of these stairs to be pulled over the exterior portion of the wall. So I'm going to use this complete break and then we'll just kind of zoom in here and I'm going to come in and put a complete break right in this area. Now I have two stair segments and I can actually now pull this stair segment over the top of the lower wall. So you can see that once the stair crosses over the wall, it's typically going to cut it off and force the wall underneath. Now the next thing I want to do is adjust the stair connection and landing in there and pull the other stair so that it dead ends into the other wall on the opposite side of the first stair segment. So let's begin the process, and this may look a little odd in the 3D view until we finish. But I'm going to select this stair segment. I'm going to use the point to point move tool, and we'll find the point of intersection. And I'm just going to pull that down and have it join right in this area. 
And then the next thing I want to do is pull that out so that it goes just past the other portion. And then the final thing is let's rejoin that landing. So once we're finished, everything should work pretty well. And then you're going to notice that at the intersection right in this area, and as we slide the 3D view over, you can see that the railing post has been omitted at the wall's intersection. I can't do too much about that because this is an automatic railing. And as I broaden the 3D view here, you can see that there may be a few scenarios that is less than ideal. In fact, notice that the post is being cut off because I have a raise post so that it lands on the tread. And since where that's coming in, that's actually right over the landing. So I need to adjust that. And there's a few other issues that we already saw above where the two post comes out on the landing. And I, that's about as close as I'm going to get with the automatic tools. So the next thing I want to do is move on and use the railing wall to get a little more specific. So let's go ahead and double click on the stairs. And I'm going to remove the railings completely at the wall on the right then that will completely remove all the railings altogether. And now we're going to take a look at using the railing wall and draw those over the top of the stairs. Now, one tip that we're going to have is you see that there is a wall underneath the stairs here, and there's a wall underneath the stairs here. When you're going to have a railing that will be on top of this, make sure that these walls are set to no room definition before you draw your railings over the top of them. Otherwise, it will just simply replace that particular wall. Let's go ahead and tile our views and look at using the interior railing that follows the stairs. Let me begin the process by first looking at the default settings for my interior railing wall. On the rail style panel, you can see I have the start and end posts set to a full post. There is a top rail and then the bottom is raised four inches. And then on the newels and balusters, you can see the type of the post being used is coming out of the library. And you can see that this is the library object that started out as a 3D solid with the base and the upper portion. I'd save that as a symbol into my library, and I changed that selection by going into the library and selecting that for my post. The panel thickness, I've set it up to be half inch, which is the thickness of the metal bracket, and also using the type that we created earlier with the glass panel railing. On the rails panel, nothing in particular. I have my top rail defined at two inches by a height of one and a half inches, and that is the settings for the particular railing. Using that railing tool, let's go ahead and click and drag to create the initial railing. If you kind of zoom in, this is actually going down to the floor right now. There is a setting inside of this rail. Let's go ahead and open it up. On the rail style panel, at the very bottom, is the option to follow stairs. When this is over the top of the stairs, it will then follow that, create the slope. As I zoom in and pull this over. In fact, I might even use the center tool and center that on the existing interior four wall. And I'll reposition the railing wall. I'm going to make a copy of the railing wall and use the reflect about, come into the stair segment and pull the railing to the other side. On this side, I'm going to pull the railing back so that it is on the first tread. So come in here, and pull that back so that it is on the first tread. And then I want to put another railing up in this area. Remember the wall below needs to be marked, no room definition. That way the railing over the stairs can be placed over that wall and not remove it. Using the railing tool, come in, drag a railing up over the stairs, open up the railing wall on the rail style panel, Mark to follow stairs. And now I can position this wall. I'm going to hold my control key down on a PC. It's a command key on a Mac. And I want to connect this wall so that it touches the perpendicular wall. As I approach that wall, you can see that since there's a wall below, it's going to want to merge. So let's just pull that back. 
and look at using a room divider to stop the movement of that. Again, I have two walls over the top of one another, the wall below the stairs and the railing wall. And I'm going to use what's called a room divider. I'm just going to click and drag the room divider out in this area. Press the tab key, go ahead and select it. Try to snap it into this area. Now I should be able to pull that railing wall using the room divider to stop it. And I can ignore the unconnected wall. And you can see that it's now stopping where I want. I do have a bit of a gap in there. And we'll talk about using a 3D solid to solve that. The next thing I'm going to do is for this stair segment, I'll hold my shift key down so that it only selects that stair segment. I'm going to open that stair segment up. And for the railing, I'm going to turn it on at the wall on the left side. Again, I've got a little bit of a gap there. I'm going to use a 3D solid to fix that. I'm going to grab this railing wall, use the copy command, control C on the keyboard, paste it on the stair segment number three. And then we'll go ahead and pull that up until it's real near the top. And then I'm going to use the command key and just kind of pull that over just a little bit so that we get that railing positioned exactly where I want. We'll use the post from the wall above to connect that railing. Using the railing wall, we've been able to create pretty much the railing we need. There's a couple of issues that we want to go in and take a look at. One is on the connection right in here. I'm going to use a 3D solid. I'm going to use the same approach down below using a 3D solid. That way I can connect those railings and not have any gaps. Using the 3D solid tool, I'm going to come in. Let me turn my crosshairs on. I'm going to come in and create the first 3D solid. I'm going to use the crosshairs, try to align this below and then go ahead and open up that 3D solid. And I'm going to set the height of it at 1.5 inches, same as the railing itself. And then from floor to top, we'll just raise that up maybe something like 55 inches. And you can kind of see it right in this view right here. I'm going to make a copy of it because I want to use that same style of a railing for the segment above. So I'm just going to slide a copy of that over. So we'll just pull it over there temporarily. And then back in this area, let's use the break command number three on the keyboard. I'm going to put a break right in this area, pull that down until it's very close and connecting to that rail. And again, using my crosshairs to kind of eyeball that, it looks like we need to pull it down. It's easier to do that maybe in the 3D view. Make sure we grab the materials off and we'll just spray that on there. And let's just pull this down a little bit further until that lines up. Zoom out a little bit. I'm going to take this railing component. We'll go ahead and rotate it and then we'll go ahead and slide it over. I'm going to pull it over because I think the elevation will be off a little bit and then we can slide this up to about where it needs to be. Probably be easier to do this in an elevation view or something like that. Let's see if we can grab that. I'm going to pull it up until it connects right in that area. Pull it over until it snaps onto the railing and we should be pretty darn close right in that area to have that rail connect over. Might pull it out a little bit further. Let's go ahead and pull that out just a little bit further so that it in 3D looks a little bit better. There we go. And so using those railing tools we've been able to connect the railing walls using 3D solids. If I move up a floor and you take a look at the railing that we've used in this case, I've actually set the offset since I have a post base with a bezel and I've set the railing to be have an offset of two inches. So it's not right on the edge of the wall. If you go into the railing itself on the rail, you can see that there's a horizontal offset for these railings using that two inch offset to pull it back just slightly from the platform. Well, that wraps up this session on the stair and railing project. Thanks a lot for watching. Let me get my uh, screen sharing set up here. There we go. Okay. So with that, uh, we're going to take live questions. If you have a question you'd like to ask, you should see a raise hand option in the GoToWebinar control panel.
just feel free to raise your hand and uh, when we call on you, unmute your microphone, tell us who you are, where you're calling from, and we'll get your, your stare questions. With that, Carrie, do we, uh, do we have some stare questions out there? Thanks, Scott. We do have some stare questions. The first one from Leslie Cohen. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Scott. Um, I have two questions. Oh, it's Leslie in Raleigh, North Carolina. I have two questions. One's probably very quick and just something that I don't know how to do. And, and the other one's a little more complex. The first one is you're making copies of those 3D objects and I don't see you going up and going, uh, you know, co make copy. How are you making the copy of those 3D objects without, mm. apparently I go through more steps. <laughs> okay. okay. And what's your and second, what's question? second question? The second question has to do with curved and helix railings because okay. I have been trying to do those with this kind of design um, with um, cables or glass. Um, and I'm having trouble with the site, trying to size them and get widths without um, like like the center of the circle, so to speak, mm. versus, you know, if I'm trying to get a stair width of 42 inches wide, but I only want the, the center of the helix to be 12 inches or something, I, I have trouble sizing my circular and my helix. I'm anyone Artways does helix and they didn't put them in their catalog. Mm. And they're it's very annoying because they're not easy to work with. Okay. <laughs> well let's take your first question. Um okay. copying a three <laughs> object. So as I kind of zoom in <laughs> to the plan we were working with. So I created a 3D object out right. of this handrail, right? And a lot of times what I'll do, uh, I think in in the presentation. I just use the copy tool that's in the lower edit menu. So I'll just kind of hover my mouse over this for a minute. Oh, you do that so quickly that I just miss it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw quite a few comments coming through. And then you just slide a copy over and uh, it's a quick way. There's also the multiple uh, transform replicate, multiple copy, and depending on what you're doing, that can be a handy way to do it. So your, does, it, does that answer that question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So your next question is um, something of, you know, more of a curved stair. Let's see. I've got a, a kind of a plan with a bunch of stairs in here. And, um, you know, here's a uh, here's a stair that I have that's curved already, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, first of all, um, just to make sure I understand exactly what you're after. You've got uh, a 48 inch wide stair, right? That will work, yeah. And uh, so I'm, I'm probably close to that. And then you want to be able to curve that around um, a certain radius so that it spins up. Right. So it's a little more of a, a more of a spiral, so to speak, but maybe yeah. not a, yeah. Right. And <clears throat> one of the things that we've done here is you can adjust the radius information. So as I kind of go down here, do you see my radius control over here? I do, and I was having challenges because then it was turning and it was changing um, my number of treads, and it was mm -hmm. changing my steps, but it wasn't changing them properly. Yeah. Um, and so I kept trying to fix you know, I was like, well, let me try locking the number of treads. Let me try locking the tread depth. Let me try this. You know, I, there was a lot of experimenting going on mm -hmm. trying to get what I wanted. Right. So, yeah, there's some <laughs> moving parts to kind of simulate a spiral staircase that's pretty tight. Um, we have a symbol in the library that's very basic of a spiral right. staircase. Oftentimes what I end up doing, Leslie, is I'll draw a pretty tight curved wall, okay? And let me ah. move over and um, into the floor plan. I'll usually end up drawing a pretty tight curved wall and set the radius of this curved wall. And if we kind of come in here, let's see here, make sure I can get this curved wall. There we go. Uh, 
is not wanting to curve. Let's just make a copy of that and pull him over a little bit. Sometimes um, go to webinar messes up with my mouse. So I've <laughs> drawn a, uh, a curved wall in here. And if I set this radius for this wall to, uh, this is on the outer, let's just set it pretty tight to something like maybe 36. So that tightens it way up, right? Yes, there we go. And then when you click and drag your stairs, if I come near the stair and I click and go around it, right? Hmm. That will follow the stair. Now, you know, eventually it's gonna be difficult to go all the way around. You can make a copy of that stair and then connect it and have multiple stair segments. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, and did you start, because I, I looked down to write something. Did <laughs> yeah. You start, did you start with a curved section when you followed the wall or a straight section? I just used a straight wall. So using okay. the straight draw stairs. Okay. Then um, you can be, and you can even use a, I, you know, if you look at this one over here, I, if you look at my radius on this wall, it's 120 inches. Well, to be exact, that's 120 inches if I zoom way in on the solid part of the wall, but on the outer side of the wall, which is the sheetrock, it's not gonna be 120, it's gonna be 120 point something. So I just drew a CAD line that's right over the top of it that followed that arc, and I got the radius from that. And so that way I knew exactly if I'm gonna curve the stairs, but once you have a curve, in this case, a wall, and you use just the click and drag stair, it's going to follow those around for you. And that's one of the easier ways to be precise in drawing a set of curved stairs. Okay. Does that work? Yes, that'll be a lot simpler, I think. <laughs> okay, I <was> good. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for your question today, Leslie. Carrie? Yep, our next question comes from John. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Yes, thank you. I uh, just saw that last example of the curved stair, uh, so that was helpful. I draw a lot of them and I have some struggles. If you go back to that curved stair, um, is there any way to smooth out that handrail on the outside? Yeah, um, that's called faceting, right? And so we've yep. got a very tight stair in here. and a lot of times we do have a smooth on facet, but we don't seem to have that on stairs. So um, you do have it like with a uh, with an arc or something like that. I believe you can change the facet angle. I'm not sure where that setting is, but there is a facet control, and I don't think we have that on the stair railing. So it does get a little chunky in your plan view. So okay. I'll, yes, I'll maybe yes, pause yes. here and make sure that um, that's accurate. If any of the chief staff members um, know <laughs> that are on here, if there's a facet. Um, so that would be a request then to okay. update. Yeah. And I yeah. struggle with that. So the way I got around it was drawing a 3D polyline. So in your other previous example where you were showing how to create that 3D polyline to connect mm -hmm. the railings right. together, you just went in the X direction. Can you take that same polyline and slope it up to meet sure. the uh, yep. other? Yeah, you can you can do that in a uh, in, in a number of elevation views or in a 3D view. If I go back into that particular plan, so you can you can slope these guys up. If I take maybe a uh, well, let's just take a 3D view. Might be and quicker that would be true for any 3D polylines, right? Mm -hmm. So you can slope this guy. Let's just make a copy of him and slide him over. So you can extrude that in, you know, different directions. Let's pull him over just a little bit. So I can pull that up. Maybe put a break in here. Pull it over. 
And so you can do all kinds of crazy things with these, you know, with these solids, depending on what you're trying to do. Okay. Yeah, I was curious uh, about, you know, the push pull uh, stretch feature, but what we're doing is basically just grabbing uh, ends in this case and mm -hmm. manipulating them. Yeah, and, you and then you can create different faces as you can, can kind of continue breaking this and pulling it around and, you know, creating pretty much any shape that you need to. Okay. All right. Does that, does that work, John? Yeah, that helps, uh, you know, clean it up since these railings that you created uh, on this example don't connect no matter what you choose in terms of extend top right. rail. Like that. Yeah. Right. And, and remember, you can also use a 3D molding polyline for your railings as well. I didn't, I didn't approach that in this session, but you can use a 3D molding polyline and basically wrap that around, around your stairs. So that's an option lieu, as well. In lieu of or as part of the feature for creating stairs? Uh, I would say it's maybe in addition to with your, oh. with your custom railings. You know, a lot of times stair railings can get very unique. Our program yes. does a good job at stairs, but as soon as you get very customized, then you're going to want to use the 3D solids or a 3D molding pie line to maybe get the exact look you're after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. You bet. Thanks, John. Scott, our next question is from Alan. Hi, Alan. Go ahead and ask your question. Hey Scott, uh, thanks for the webinar. Um, uh, I uh, I'm in uh, uh, foggy uh, Carmel, California. Oh, um, okay. Uh, for in your example of the railing um, that you set up with the glass railing, normally on those uh, types of uh, glass railing clips, we would see the um, intermediate or or even at the balusters wherever we're going. Um, down the angle of the stairs, those would remain rectangles rather than parallelograms. Okay. Um, is there an automatic way that that could be achieved, or it's just uh, placing a lot of polysolids? Well, I don't believe there's an automatic way to make that happen, Alan. Um, and, and so, you know, using something like a solid may be a way to accomplish what you're trying to get. Okay. Yeah, that, that's probably the best answer I have. May may not be the one you want, but that's probably the best one I have for that. Okay, all right, uh, well, thank you. Okay, hey, thanks for calling. Pleasure. Scott, we have Rochelle here with a question. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Scott. Hi. Hey, um, so, can we watch this again? <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, there was a lot. Uh, I saw quite a few questions coming in saying, gosh, that's just way too fast. So we record this and we'll be sending out a uh, link to this in the next day or probably tomorrow. And okay. uh, then you'll be able to pause it and uh, figure out what was actually going on instead of having it fly by on you. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> you bet. Scott, our next question is from Michael. Go ahead, Michael. Hi, Scott. Hi, Michael. I've uh, been using Chief since 04, and I recognize your voice, and it's nice to put a face. And i got to tell you, all the videos you've put together have really helped me over the years. I appreciate well, it. Great. Thanks for uh, checking in today. What can we help with? Yeah. Um, when So my question is, uh, often on a like a an exterior deck will uh will want to mount run the post down and attach them to the outside face of the framing mm -hmm. and i'm wondering if uh is there an automatic way to do that okay so you are looking at let me go back in here and let me close a couple things that i've got going on let me just see if I can grab a quick plan that might have something like that. So I have a deck here that 
has, uh, I think, what you're asking for, where the posts go down yes. and attach on the outside. Is that what you're looking for? Absolutely. So in your um, in your uh, deck railing, um, what you can do? Let me uh, just open this up in here. So you can offset your railing, right? And you can also, so if I go down into the rail style, I'm on the rail style and you see the horizontal offset, so that'll move it off. And then down below is the raise lower uh, for your, um, your bottom rail. So I set that at minus six inches, so that'll pull your balusters down, right? And then for your um, post information, then you've got your posts and you can lower that as well. So there's a bottom offset down here. And it, so the, you, <coughs> your newels or your posts are four inches and. Uh, yeah, let's go back in. Let's go back in there. So I've got a, a pretty large post, right? Four inches. Uh -huh. 48 inches, and then the bottom offset is nine and three eighths. So I wanted it to go into the rim or the joist that's on the uh, that, that's on the deck. And your uh, offset, I noticed, was two and a half inches. And yeah, how did so I you moved. Put... Yeah, so I moved that the width of the of the baluster, right? Because I wanted that baluster to come right down and attach into that rim. And that joist. All right. Yeah. That looks like it's a pretty easy thing to do. So we, uh, yeah, we added those things in uh, Chief Architect X15 to be able to offset it. So you can offset, you know, right into um, when you're drawing a deck with your railing wall, you can go into those offsets now and control it depending on what you want to do. And in this case, I've kind of monkeyed with this deck where it's got a couple of different wall types. So the balusters go down and then the posts go down as well. Well, thank you. That answers my question. Thank you. Okay. Well, great. Thanks. Thanks a lot for calling in, Michael. You Scott, our next question is from Gail. Hi, Gail. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi. Hi, Scott. Hi, Gail. Um, my question is probably railings uh stairs 101 <laughs> okay um how you see how you've got um your stairs overlapping the wall and coming around you know the the corner how would you draw a knee wall an angled knee wall that enclosed the stairs and had a wood cap on top of it with the balusters on top of the stairs uh, on top of the cap okay let's see i should probably have an example of that just to make sure that I'm on the same page as you, so let's go in and grab one here. Got a bunch of stairs in here. Let's take a 3D view and see if we've got one that kind of fits what you're after. Uh, it is, no, yes, after. that is it. How do I do that? Okay, so in this case, I think we call this a stair rake wall, and your wall type is going to be a pony wall. So that means there's two different wall types. In this case, the lower wall type is a solid railing with a cap, and the upper wall is a railing, and it's a baluster style wall. So let's open it up and take a peek at it. Let me just slide this over so you can still see part of it. On my wall types, so I've marked it as a pony wall. Mm -hmm. The lower wall is a four inch wall, so it's just an interior. And then mm -hmm. as you zoom in a little bit, the 12 inches is 12 inches from the bottom of that stairs. So this is where you adjust that height information. Elevation of lower wall. Yeah. Okay. And then on the, and then on the top is an interior railing wall, and that's where you can set that up to be, you know, any style of of railing you want, this case is a baluster. And a lot of times when I draw these walls, I start with the wall type that's a half wall, so I don't have to go in and add the, well, I'll probably have to do that in a plan view. So I'll use this half wall type 
that's already got the cap on it. So it kind of saves me one step. So I don't have to put the cap on it. So that wall already has a cap on it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So because, I mean, you can add a wall cap in here, but that one already has one on top of it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I'll do that to start with, just kind of saves me a step so that when I'm trying to draw that stair rake wall, it's one less step to, to get it to happen. Then you make it into a pony wall. Yeah, so then uh, you just open this up and uh, on the wall types, you mark it as a pony wall. And then uh, you Twelve. adjust whatever it is down here. And then on the top of it, if you select interior railing, then depending on what your railing type is, and I have to change it, so let's go into the railing type. Sorry. Um, rail style, balusters. There we go. Mm -hmm. And then that's kind of how you how you do it. How do you make it angled? Well, um, if I if I come in here, it has to it has to follow stairs, right? So oh, you, sure. Let's just draw a few stairs in here. Let's pull this over so that it can follow the stairs. So I snap that into the stair. Let's just bump that over and we'll pull that back. So once it bumps to the stair, there's a setting on the rail style at the bottom that says follow stairs. Do you see okay. that? Okay. Mm -hmm. and then once we go back into our camera view, zoom out a little bit. Where are we at? So there he is. Yeah, perfect. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for calling. Oh, can I can I say yeah. if you wanted to pull that newel out so that it was sitting on the floor, not on the top. If if you want to pull the newel out, how would you do that? This guy. Uh huh. I would place it out of the library. Probably. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep, thanks for calling in. Mm -hmm. Scott, we have Yvette here. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Scott. Um, I have a question about the complete break icon. I think I kind of zoned out when you used it. Is that something, how, how do you get to that? Or is that an, an X15 thing or? Um... It's, um. yeah, so a lot of times, let's say, let's go into our floor plan view. And um, let's assume that we've got a wall that is somewhere in this region, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, our stairs are bumped to it, so let's bump our stairs. So when you want to have those stairs wider than the uh, wall or the stairwell, right? When you click on the stairs and you come down into the break tool, um, what you want to do is you want to use the complete break because that's going to create, and I'll just hover over that for a minute, that's going to create two unique stair segments and allow you to size them differently. So as I come in here, I now have a number two, and then when I click on the segment number one, that allows me to pull that out and have it wider so the stair dead ends into that wall. So the complete break, when you click on the tool, you have to click on it first, so you click on break. Do you see that okay? See that? Yep, yep, no, that's perfect. I, I, um, yeah, I didn't that's yep. what happened. Yep, and then um, in theory, that gets us to dead end that stair into that wall. Great, thank you, that's very helpful. You bet. Scott, we have Brent here with a question. Go ahead, Brent. All right, let's check in with Jenny Russell. Hi, Jenny, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, thank you. Um, I was wondering how you install stair lights in the risers? Okay, Jenny, one, one more time, one more time. I, I missed that. Sorry, I need to install stair lights in the risers. Mm. Okay. Okay. And I so have not to put, to put stair lights in the riser. Let's zoom over here. And I put three LED strip lights in my risers. 
And what I've done here is I did that with the strip light that is available in the program. So underneath your electrical tools, there's a strip light. And I'll have to move into plan view because you can really only draw those in a floor plan view. So let's slide over where I have these electrical items. So I saw that question come in. I drew a couple of strip lights in here. So underneath your electrical tools is a tool called um, a rope light. So basically a LED strip light is a, what they commonly use. So in an elevation view, it takes a combination of probably a couple views. And we slide over a little bit. You can see the rope lights in here. So I've been able to adjust it. And then I'm probably going to take another elevation view at the other direction so that I know that I've got it positioned exactly, right? Mm -hmm. So as we kind of zoom in and you look where those LED strips are, that's where you can do it. I've seen a lot of these more modern stairs where they rabbit that in underneath the tread, but you know, in our program, if you want to see the light, it's going to have to be visible, so you could call that out as a, you know, just a detail that has how you're going to install those. Okay. Does that work for you? Yes. Yeah, that works. Thank you. A little bit tedious because you've got to draw one, get, you know, set the height, and then I'll use a multiple copy on the tread depth, and then, you know, take the other elevation view and then move them up. And transform replicate can help make that a little bit quicker if you're if you get handy with that tool. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Scott, we have David here with a question. Go ahead and ask your question, David. I don't know if you can hear me. Hi, David. How are you doing? Um, I'm questioning about the um, like attic stairs and the winders that go up with pie shaped risers. Okay. Anything specific? No, I mean, basically, I can't get the landing to do anything like that, so. Okay. Let me close a few of these things. So as I kind of zoom out here, this is my great big stair project. And I think I have some winders over in this area. So here's one set of winders that. Perfect. Is, that's exactly it. That's it, huh? Yeah. So if um, the way I typically would draw those is I don't try to draw them against the wall. If you go into our help system and you search for stair winders, it recommends you don't draw those against the wall initially until you kind of have the stairs laid out. So right now I have four treads that form that winder. So I try to get that before I draw the stairs. So if you want, I can do that real quickly for you. So I'm going to maybe pull those over to the side and you notice what happened when I moved them the winder part disappeared because it's not against a wall right okay so the way I'm going to draw those typically let me delete this set of stairs we just drew the way I'm going to typically draw these is to come out here and I'm going to draw stair segment number one I usually try to do the math on this and figure out, well, I, I want so many treads. In this example, I'm just gonna draw some randomly. Then for the next stair segment, let's assume we want four winders. So I'm gonna click and drag stair segment number two until I get four stair segments, right? So I actually now have two segments. Do you see that okay? okay? Yep. Then, in my case, I'm gonna hold the Alt key down, and on the Mac, it's, um, if I had my mouse pad here handy, I could tell you what it is. It might be the Command key, I can't remember. Um, I, got the, I got a PC. Okay, good. Alt so key. then, um, I'm gonna hold the Alt key down, and there's the equivalent of this on the Mac, and I'm gonna pull it over until it's perpendicular. Do you see that? Yep. Once it's perpendicular, I'm gonna release. Then I'm going to draw stair segment number three, pick up the snap, and I'm going to drag it over. Okay. Did you see Great. how I did that? Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to click on the stairs and I'm going to bump it to both walls. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. So let's uh, let's drag that over. I'm going to bump it to wall number one. Then I'm going to bump it to wall number two. Okay. Then 
what I need to do is double click to open up the stairs. Doesn't really matter which stair segment I click on on the general panel because any one of them that's marked a winder will mark all of them a winder. And when it touches the wall, it forms the winder. Perfect. Is that what you're after? Very helpful. Now, I've been on Chief since 2008, so I just never could catch that corner thing. And that, yeah. that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, always when you uh, are in these things, you can always hit the help and uh, it will open up the help system as I pull that over to the other screen. And uh, this is very handy. You can also just type in like Winder. Yep, I've uh, been there, done that, believe me. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, good. Thank so we've you. Got a lot of, yeah, we've got a lot of questions coming in. Um, I wanna be respectful of your time. I'm gonna stick around for a little bit longer. But I'm also going to be respectful of your time. Uh, some of you I know probably reserved one hour for the session. And uh, so I just wanted to do a couple of uh, comments here. So if you need to leave, you can. Um, we do have a number of uh, training events that are coming up. We have another live session like today on June 15th. It's going to be doing bath floor plans and dimensioning them. Baths are a little bit smaller project. Uh, complicated with lots of fixtures in there. So we're going to talk about how to dimension those. We're going to be doing a free boot camp if you're new or newer or would just like to learn more about how the program works. We've got one specific for kitchens and baths and one for residential coming up in mid and latter part of June. And then our big event, which is in Coeur d'Alene, it's called the Chief Academy. That will be at the end of the summer. You'll want a book now. It's actually filling up. So with that, if you want to stick around, we're going to take some more questions. If you need to leave and you still have a question, please send it to us at sales at cheaparchitect.com and uh, we'll try and get you an answer. So with that, if you need to leave, thanks. And if you're going to stick around, uh, then we'll take a few more questions. Remember, we will be sending out an email with a recording of the entire session, including the Q&A. So, I'll turn it back over to Carrie and see if we still have a handful of questions, which it looks like we probably do. We sure do, Scott. We have Steve Kabuchi here. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, Scott. How you doing? Hi, Steve. Um, I just had a quick question. Um, so, like, even looking at the the picture when there's uh, that you have up right now of just railings that are open on a second floor um aesthetically one of the issues i run into is always seeing you know like the butt end of like a of like hardwood flooring exposed like i don't know if you could see in the picture that's being shown right now where it says questions is there a way because you know generally when you do railing that's open to the floor below either there is uh like a bottom rail that's like on the floor or there's like some sort of like bullnose type piece do you have right. any sort of way to, um, yeah, to kind of make that hide that that butt that like butt end of the the hardwood? Because um, anytime I try to use like the uh, the floor opening tool, um, that doesn't quite give me the result I'm looking for. Is there an easier solution? So Steve, yeah, thanks for the question. That's a that's a good one. I I didn't see that come in earlier. And you're right, a lot of times you're gonna use a trim piece and it's gonna have a nice smooth bullnose. We don't have this uh, <laughs> this abrupt end, right? That's even with <laughs> the, uh, the floor below. You know, probably what I would end up doing is doing a molding pie line and assigning the bullnose profile to that and setting the thickness, maybe three quarters inch, seven eighths, whatever that hardwood floor is and laying it in there as a plank. Okay. You, have you have you done that before? Would be do you know how to do that? Yeah, yeah, that's kind okay. of what I've done as a as a remedy. Um, I yeah. just wasn't sure if you know. There's a lot of things that I end up doing. Well, it was helpful to see you use the poly line, the solid poly lines, because sometimes I feel like I'm cheating when I use yeah. them like all over the place. But sometimes it's uh -huh. just very right, cool. So right, yeah. Well, uh, the program won't do everything. 
um, maybe yeah. with the automatic tools, but with the you know 3D solids or molding pie lines, hopefully um, you know never feel like you're cheating. If it gets the job done, then that's great. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, I the the less poly lines I can have, you know, messing with my my drawings, the better for me, because uh, yeah. yeah, especially when I go to do prints and stuff like that. But all right, that totally answers the question. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. All right, our next question is from Scott Phillips. Go ahead and ask your question, Scott. Hi, hey, Scott. This is Scott Phillips from uh, Roy City, Texas. Oh, welcome. Um, my question is about your stairs you drew there. So I'm banging my head against the wall a lot of the times um, trying to get my stairs uh, the best optimized uh, tread length and tre uh, riser height. Is there a way to set uh, your um, default settings on stairs to fall within the building code? Because I know sometimes stairs can, you put them in there and they're like the riser height's only like four inches. Ah, you're right. Yeah, that might not make code even in Texas, huh? No. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of times when I you know, started this session, I figured out as much as I could before I started drawing the stairs because it's a lot easier to set your stair defaults before you go into the space and and put your stairs in there. And in your template plan too, you can do that. And if you look at your default settings, um, you just double click on your stairs. You know, we have default settings for interior and exterior stairs. So a lot of times I like to make sure that, you know, if you're typically drawing with a 48 inch stair or a 42 inch stair, I like to set that in my defaults and then any other information about that. So typically in, in many cases, automatic treads fall within typical stair code. Okay. And, and um, you know, it's a function then of your ceiling height. You have a nine foot ceiling or 10 foot ceiling. The program is going to assume and try to meet, you know, floor to floor with what you've done. And that's why we have automatic treads that are turned on. And, you know, when you start turning some of these things off, then you have more access to these. And my default, I could, I don't have the option to turn off automatic heights, but you can start to get into those settings. So when you click, let's just click a set of stairs in here then you know these click stairs in theory will meet platform to platform okay and then you know if you start going you know in here you can change this information at that point you just need to make sure that you haven't you know gone outside of the code requirements because we're not going to enforce any code once you've gone in here and and done it plus code sometimes varies with with different things on stairs, depending on where you're at. Okay. Yeah. So try that to set works. your default settings the best you can for your stair, or if you know you're gonna do a project for a client and they want a set of 60 inch stairs, I usually try and set that before going in and, and drawing the stairs because it's just easier to uh, to kind of manage them and edit them after the, uh, you know, after the defaults are set. All right. Well, that's all I had. You have a great day. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Scott. Scott, we have Brent here. Go ahead and ask your question, Brent. Scott, can you hear me okay? Hi, Brent. Excellent. Can Can you hear me okay, sir? I yes. Okay, excellent. I asked because I was having a little issues with my my earbuds there. Great question by Great question by the previous caller. I'm uh, I'm a couple hundred miles north of him. I live in the Dallas, Texas area. And uh, so I'm sorry, east of him, uh, he's in Royce. But anyways, my question for you is this, um, and I've been struggling with this thing for the last week or so. So looking at the 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 photo that you're showing with the questions on there, and it shows how you come up a couple steps, you hit a platform, go up a couple more steps, hit a platform, a couple more like that. If you were to, what I'm, what I'm needing to do is basically where the platform is on where your arrow is, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll We'll call that the first floor. So okay. I want to I want to come up the stairs just like you have it. Hit a platform, then turn. Mine's left, but yours is right. Is fine. 
come up some more stairs, hit a platform, okay. and then and then where, where you have it up here on the second floor with that glass uh, uh, railing there, I want that now to have stairs that, so if you, if you come up those stairs and you're on that platform, you would turn to your left and come up a few more stairs and reach the second floor. Okay. How would, how would I do that, sir? That's the thing that's got me boggled. Well, it sounds like you're going to Stairville down there in Dallas. Um, so if, if I understand right, you've got a few platform height changes. And um, up here in the Northwest, a lot of times people set their garage maybe 24 inches down from their main floor. And um, then you run a set of stairs. And once you've set your platforms, you're going to want to set your platform height. So you get these rooms so that you've got the right heights to begin with. That's step one. Okay, got it. Okay. So then once you've got your room height platforms set, so, you know, you come up 24 inches, maybe you come up another, you know, 24 inches onto the next one, then you can click and drag those stairs and it will meet the platforms. A lot of times if you get very near to the platform and just click, it will join from floor to floor and the program does it automatically and that's the easiest way. And then when you have an intersection, in this case a landing, and your stairs are very close and adjacent, you click in between them with the stair tool, it will form a landing. You can also hand draw your landing, and if you connect it to the stair, then it will make all the joins and the elevation changes for you. So, you know, are you comfortable with setting your room platform heights and, and understanding how that works? If you could just give a quick demonstration of that, sir, I would greatly yeah. appreciate it. Let's just Thank do a simple so one. I'm just going to do a simple um, square house, okay? And we'll set a platform height in here using a wall tool. So let's just take this and we'll call it a garage that is maybe minus 24 inches in change. So when we take an elevation view, let's just do a back clip through here, you're going to see an elevation change between the platform, right, and the slab. Um, you know, use, don't worry about my floor not meeting here. But when you click very near in here, it's going to generate those stairs for you. And if I tile my screen, we come in here and assume we have a door and you use your stair tool and this works I saw a number of questions coming in how do you connect stairs to a deck when it's on the outside and you have terrain when you click very near so I'm just gonna leave my cursor there if I click right there the stairs should join automatically to that platform so it knows that the uh, I put a giant paste. It knows that the platform down on the right side is 24 inches below the platform on the left side. And just by clicking near there, it joined the two platforms with the stairs. Got it. Uh, it's, that's unbelievable. That's exactly what I needed. Thank you so much. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. You bet. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, Scott, we have Michelle Smith. Go ahead and ask your question, Michelle. Hi, Scott. So I have some pretty basic questions. Um, first of all, I noticed in all the examples you were showing earlier, you had horizontal balusters. Okay. So okay. can you, what's the best way to do that without having the panel, like I used the panel one and it shows brake lines in the balusters. So that's my first question. Okay. And okay. Second question is when you're doing starter treads, how did you round them? Okay. Okay. Did we limit you to only two questions? Only two questions. Well, I have a whole bunch more, but that's oh, fine. Okay. Well, let's, let's start with these two. Let's start with these two. Horizontal balusters. Um, yes. So when let me close. Let me close this great plan we just did. Um, and let's pull this open and let's draw a set of stairs in here so when you have a set of stairs and you're looking at balusters um you you 
you can only have vertical balusters when you select the option to say that it's a baluster. Let me switch that back over to balusters. So these are typically going to be vertical, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to have them to be horizontal, and we peek in here, you're going to need to use a panel, OK? Okay. And so right now I have a panel on here, which is just a millwork symbol that is in the library. We have a number of them, or you can draw your own custom ones. I did a very simple custom one. So if you look along my back wall over here, mm -hmm. I drew a series of horizontal balusters, right? And I used yeah. that as a 3D solid. Do you see these? Mm-hmm. And so in an elevation view, I drew a solid one, and then I did a multiple copy every six inches, so I have my four-inch gap in between those two-inch things. So now those are a series of a half a dozen um, 3D solids. In my floor plan view, if you look at those, they're right here. Mm -hmm. And I drew a marquee around those, and I saved them into my library after converting them to a symbol. Right, and I made sure I put it in the millwork. And then once it's in my library, assuming that I can find that quickly for you, stairs, horizontal balusters. Here it is in my library. Okay. Then in your camera view, it's easiest to do this in a 3D view, grab your horizontal balusters, make sure you get the replacement icon before you click, mm -hmm. And then you can click and place those on your stairs. So if that's not exactly what you're after, you can draw, you know, your own profile, your own mm -hmm. uh, baluster, and then. But basically, it's a custom option. I mean, my question was, you have the cable rails in there that you can just grab and do the same thing. Yep. Why don't they right. create something very similar that's just, you know, a small one-inch um, horizontal there, there, baluster? Yeah, there is some. Um, if we go into, let's open this up, show and folder. Um, I believe there are some in here. Uh, might be under fence or something. Adrian, do you want to bail me out here? Um, off the top of my head, let's see. I'll have to poke around too, but there are a few. Um, basket weave. <laughs> I've seen I one in there. The thing, you, there's always really difficult, you know, complex here things. But yeah, here we go. I found one right here. It's just, and then I can switch that out using that one. But see, all right. Now look at that. See, it's got these separation lines on it because sure. it's a very narrow um, symbol. Yeah. So. I, I guess my question is, you know, with all these very difficult and complex options, why they can't just add one that's sure. a one? Well, if you it, it, right, I'll make a note. We can add that. You can also create your own. I literally no, I, create. Yeah, I can. I can uh, absolutely. So yeah, I just thought. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, we could do a better job in having non-marked um, bamboo or whatever that is um, railings, mm -hmm. and uh, for your horizontal. Okay. And okay, and then, then your starter tread question, right? Yes. Let me undo this a couple times. Let's get back if I have a baluster or something. Um, and you want to have a starter tread on here, right? When you click on your stair, let me get that back to baluster if I can. So not uh, how to make the, the treads. It's just I don't know how to round them on the ends. Right, so when you click on your stair, there is a tool called Starter Tread. Are you familiar with that? Oh, okay, gotcha, there it is. Then you can pull these out to create your Starter Treads. We only, we do Treads 1 and 2, so you can have Treads 1 and 2 with Starter Treads. Gotcha. Same with gotcha. flaring, if we go back, um, the flaring works the exact same way click on the stair. I saw a couple of those questions in here as long as we're in here. Then you can click on this and you can then flare your stair and 
create a slight curve on there. I knew there was a way to do it. I just was totally missing that icon down there. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for calling in, Michelle. All right, Scott, we have Thomas next. Go ahead and ask your question, Thomas. Hey, Scott. I am wondering how to create the stairway rake walls, except this time on the upper portion of the U-shaped uh, of a U-shaped stairway. Um, when I try to do that, if I draw the wall on the lower floor, then it tries to match the lower section, and if I draw on the upper floor, then it just goes straight. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't recognize the stairway next to it because this, the entire stairway is drawn on the lower floor. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's see if I can go back in to one of these. So I have a U-shaped stair here, right? Yep. And you want a stair rake wall. Oh boy, I have one of those. Let me just grab one. Um, this plan over here, I think it was, let's just peek and make sure I've got this. Save a little bit of time. You saw earlier how we created this rake wall in here? Correct. Is that what, you, is that what you're after? Yep, for the upper okay. section now of the, of the U-shaped stairway, yes. Yep. Okay, so if I grab that wall and uh, we just borrow it, and we put it over here next to our U-shaped stair. I'll rotate it, pull it over, and then um, let's snap it over onto our stair. And let's see if this is doing what we expect it to do. Okay. And you want it to continue all the way up and around those stairs? Uh, I want it between the two stair sections. Okay, you want it in upper... between. Yeah, stair I'm sorry. Stairs. But then I want it to follow the upper, the, the, the highest stair section after the landing. Does that okay. make sense? So... Okay. Yeah, so a few moving parts to that. Let me just place a brand new set of stairs because that may be easier because um, I don't know the gap. So if I go into the U-shaped stairs, the first thing I'm going to do is let's put in a gap of maybe four or five inches in here. Let's put in 4.5 inches without a split landing. Okay. And okay. then we place, uh, sorry about that. I said without a split landing. So four and a half inches. That's fine. And then I grab that stair wall. And let's just kind of place that so that we can get it positioned. And so that rake wall needs to be in between these two, right? Correct. Let's see if we can do that. And we'll pull that up. And I don't know what this is going to look like. Let's see what happens. I'm probably going to need some help on this one. Yeah, so that's probably going to take a little bit of work. I'm going to have to bump that over because it's not sure which stair segment it's going on. So you can see it's actually moving on to the upper one right now, right? Well, yeah, that's actually what I was looking for, though. Oh, okay. I, I always, I always, it always follows the lower section for me. So okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I you got it, it right, to follow the I upper. I put section. it right in the middle. So. Depending yep. on what your gap is and your wall is, um, you might need to mess around with it a little bit. And usually it's going to follow the stair that it's closest next to. And since okay. I guess that was probably nearing on the side of the upper one. Okay. So if I fudge the gap a little bit. Um, Maybe. And then make yep. it just a little bit closer, you know, a sixteenth right. of an inch closer to the other one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds Thanks, good. John. Scott, our next question comes from Nikki. Go ahead and ask your question, Nikki. Hi, yeah, my name is Nikki. I'm calling from uh, Portland, Oregon, and I actually was just passing through Coeur d'Alene over the weekend. Um, wow. But I had a question about um, if I have stairs that are going up to a second level behind a wall, um, if I want to have kind of the underneath portion of the stairs visible after a certain point, um, typically my ceiling plane doesn't 
happen. And then a lot of times the drywall where the, the wall turns to go under uh, the stairs, it, okay. uh, it it doesn't have the drywall on the end of it typically. Oh, well, there's at least less sheetrock. Labor's in tight demand now. Yes, um, and I've been waiting for to ask my question. I do have a meeting that I've got to run off on, but I am planning on watching this. So please explain away. <laughs> um, yeah, that one may take me a minute to fig wrap my head around. Um, and since you have to run, what maybe what you could do, Nikki? Why don't you send in an example that you okay. have? Go ahead and send it into sales at Chief Architect. Okay. And then I can kind of um, open it up, and we can see what uh, what's going on with uh, with your uh, with your sheetrockless uh, stair segment. Yes. Currently, I'm just putting polyline solids on there, but I don't like doing that. Um, well, um, yeah. Sometimes um, there may be gaps, and using solids to get the job done that. Mm -hmm. But send your send your plan, and we'll take a look at it and see if. There and that was is. sales at Chief. Yep, sales at cheaparchitect.com. We'll uh, we'll peek at it and see what we can see. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Nikki. Mm -hmm. Scott, let's check in with Anna. Go ahead and ask your question, Anna. Hi, Scott. Yeah, can you hear Anna? me? Okay. Hi. Uh, my question is more about this time efficiency because I'm looking at your wonderful project with all type of stairs I could ever possibly need. And what would be advice? Is there any way for you a chief to create like a sample stair examples that we can just pull from? So um, yeah, I've been working out of my <clears throat> you know my stair warehouse here, right? And we've just been kind mm -hmm. of generating different stairs. Um, I don't know that we have a stair sample plan that you can download. Mm -hmm. We do have a number of videos that. Hopefully, okay. we'll show you. Um, what I typically do is I'll um, I'll save these plans into a stair folder, and then when I need to remember how to do something, then <laughs> I'll pull it open. But I don't have one. I'll make gotcha. a note of it, have a stair sample plan to to get it. But if you go to our video system and you type in stairs, there are a number of videos that have uh several styles of stairs and how to create those okay and would you recommend for me to maybe create my own like a template i guess my my other question can i just have safe types of stairs already and just basically install them in the plan or you think the best way is just for me to create it every time um with default if your ceiling height is always the same and you're using mm -hmm. a set of stairs you've already drawn, um, you know, let's let's say you like this set of stairs in here, it would be pretty easy to copy that and paste it into a new plan if you find that easier. As far as, um, you know, I'm not one that says you need to relearn how to do the stairs every time because if you're not doing it, you know, all the time, you may forget. And yeah. whatever whatever is most productive for you. So if you had a, you know, a couple stairs that you like to use, then just copy them, put them into the plan, make any changes for the special wall connections you may have, and uh, hopefully that might save you a little bit of time. All right, thank you so much. You bet, thanks for calling in, Anna. All right, Scott, our next question is from Jamie. Hi, Jamie, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Scott. Uh, I'm in Eagle Creek, Oregon, and my question is in regards to rooftop decks. Um, could, could you repeat that one more time, Jamie? Create a rooftop deck. Oh, rooftop deck. In the past, I've used a slightly sloped roof plane, say a quarter inch to a foot. Um, and then on the attic wall, attic floor, I place the railing walls. Um, with a pony wall below it to connect the gap that happens in between. My problem comes at the low end of the roof slope. That wall um, ends up being a little bit lower than the other ones. So the, the side walls, it connects to the high point of the roof plane just fine. But I've had to like do the math to try to figure out at what elevation 
the railings should be so that they all connect. Okay. And I'm wondering, is there a way that I don't have to do that math every time to try to figure that out? Boy, I don't know the answer um, since you have it on a sloped roof plane, right? Your stair railings on a sloped roof plane? Correct. I'd probably have to take a look at your plan to better understand it. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to get you out of your math lesson. But if you want to send it in, we'll take a peek at it. Sales at chiefarchitect.com and uh, see. I think the, uh, the short answer is you may have to continue to use your math. Okay. Yeah, but if you want to send that in, um, Jamie, then we'll, we, 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 can, we can peek at it and just see what you've got going on. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, got time for a few more questions here. And uh, again, if, if, we're, if we run out of time here and you've still got questions, then uh, go ahead and feel free to send those in to sales at Chief Architect. Carrie? Thanks, Scott. Our next question is from Kareem. Hey, Kareem, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Hi, Kareem. I'm calling from Antigua in the West Indies. I see that, yes. Uh, yeah, okay. I have a, I have a simple question, Well, uh, Doing a stair from one level to the next, um, and you use the cut hole, you know, the, the cut hole feature to cut the hole, when yeah. it gets to the top, it doesn't create uh, a, a post at the top. So the stake comes up, the rail comes up, and it just, you know, has a gap. Like I used once, I'm personally using a cable rail, and it comes mm -hmm. up and it just ends. Mm -hmm. um, can't use a molding because then I'd have to do each one for each piece of the, the cable. Mm. Uh, is there a way to, you know, to get it to, at least the cables to go all the way up? at least you know to the next level mm -hmm. so that even if i put a post you know the the, the cables run up into the post you know mm -hmm. that's my problem right now um is I, it pretty I, I similar noticed... cream to this intersection right here where yep yeah yep. so on the t on the top this could easily be a cable right yeah and on the top here that would be a cable right yeah yeah is that not is that not working for you no, what I'm saying, when it comes up, the transition from the steer to the landing, to mm -hmm. the top floor, right. there's no, there's no, there's no post. Okay, well, let's there's take a newel. So I put a newel there, but I have to adjust it to come a bit over the landing just so that this, the cables could, you know, appear to be touching it. Okay. Yeah, but the cables don't go all the way up. Okay, let's take a peek. I think I had that similar issue here. So if I, let's just pull this back and I broke my, of course I broke my stair definition. Um, <clears throat> so you're saying that, um, let's turn that to be invisible and see if we can get this to repeat. So you're saying you're not getting a post right here. That's correct. Yeah. And are you using just the automatic stair railing? Yeah. Yeah, I'm using yeah. the automatic stair, yeah. Um well I'm not sure what to uh what to think about that. Maybe um you could send your plan in, we can take a peek at it. Um you you saw maybe in my session earlier, I wasn't able to generate in this case the post automatically with the stairs. Uh -huh at this point and i did have to place a stair post manually in that case to get that one generated mm -hmm. yeah well I, there I, are, I, I, go ahead go ahead well there are situations where sometimes the posts won't generate exactly how or where you want them or or maybe omits them depending on mm -hmm. the on the design so that's when placing them manually. But if you want to send that in, Kareem, um, we can take a peek at it. Okay. Uh, oh, but a quick follow-up to that. Um, yeah. 
I, I was watching it, you earlier, and you drew the manual rail. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't got a chance to try it yet, but if you draw the manual rail, um, you know, I, I'm wondering if it'll come up to that level and mm -hmm. break and, and turn. So it'll come up at the angle and then turn flat again. You know, I, I don't know. Would it, would it do that? Well, you can see if I switch that back onto this is my this is my railing that follows stairs right here. Uh -huh. So you can see how it's generated in here, uh -huh. and that's what it's done. Yeah, and it stops there. So yeah. that post there is it manually placed or is it automatic from your? That's that's part of the wall. And okay. I used, a, I used a railing wall that follows stairs. Oh, okay. Okay, I guess I'll have to try that as well and see yeah. what happens. Yeah. Yeah, but I've noticed when I use cables, you know, it doesn't come, the cables don't go all the way up. I try right. adjusting the spacing, you know, it just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't come all the way up to the to the next level, to the landing, mm -hmm. to the top. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that happen before. <laughs> even, yeah. even, even in the U.S. it happens. <laughs> Okay. I hear you. Thanks, thanks for calling in, Corinne. Right. Thank you. Uh, Carrie, we, uh, I think we have time for two more questions here. All right. Our next one comes from Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Scott. Sorry. I'm Sarah from New York. Yeah, so, hi. Um, I have a question. I have a deck with different measurements of steps. Um, for instance, I have my first stairs are eight feet eight then i have a landing nine feet seven and last i have 14 feet six the last two um stairs so my client was asking for the last two stairs should be fleared for some reason it didn't work and the hmm. railings is not continuous from the top oh. to the bottom okay only for two stairs yeah, the last two stairs, the, like the starter stairs, should be flared towards uh, the outside. Okay. Um, be be tough for me to troubleshoot exactly what's going on with it. If you want to send that in, we can take a peek at it and see what you've got going on. Um, especially with uh, you know a couple different stair segments and how they're connecting. So. If you want to button that up and send it off to us here, we'll uh, we'll peek at it and see what you got. Okay, sounds does that good. Sound, right. Does that sound fair? Yep, yep. Because okay. I, I while I'm also looking into it that the railing should be continuous from the top till the bottom, and that's not happening either. Sure. Well, um, maybe jot down what what you're looking for, and if you want to mock it up in any way, that way we can kind of see what's uh, what's happening with your uh, with your railing. Okay, sounds like a plan. Thank you so much, Scott. Okay, Sarah, have a great day. Sure. Okay, Carrie, um, last question here, and okay. if we uh, didn't get to you, remember you can shoot those in at Sales Achieve. Go ahead, Carrie. The last question is from Ron Berlin. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question, Ron. I guess um, maybe Ron's uh, moved on. Okay, let's check in with Kelsey for our last question then. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Kelsey. Edith, okay. go ahead and ask your question. Okay, Carrie, why don't we uh, why don't we wrap up here? If um, if you didn't get your question answered or your mute, mute button didn't unmute for you, then uh, button that up and send, us, send it to us at Sales of Chief and we'll uh, see if we can get back to you. Uh, just a couple of closeout things here. We've got a live webinar in a couple weeks that will be on bathroom floor plan dimensions, two boot camps, one specifically for kitchens and baths, one for residential. Those are in mid-June and then our big event, the Chief Academy, it's a fun social and learning experience if you can reserve space there. It is filling up. That would be a great opportunity to see us here in Coeur d'Alene. 
So thanks a lot for attending. We'll be sending out an email that has a link to the live session and also a survey. Have a great day and thanks a lot for attending.